So this Exercise Parser Download, this is what I'm referring to. You click on this, and it'll gonna tell you that it's downloading. Just know its location. It probably will gonna be in the Downloads folder, most probably. So now what I need to do is, after I download this from the Blackboard, is to come to Eclipse, In the Eclipse, I need to now add that parser to my project, so I will right click on the project and go to its properties, which is, which is down below here. Then I will going to go to Java Build Path. And in the Java build path, I will going to click on add external jars. This is where I will going to browse that. And I'm going to click open. So I'm going to add this to the list. So wherever it is just grab the zip file you don't, don't need to unzip it okay then you click OK so it's now added so all the parsers that we need to do the job will now be able to be will, will now be available to us now the first thing we'll do is we're gonna create an XML document Unlike HTML, none of the XML tags make any sense. They don't make any sense to the browser. You can pretty much come up with your own markup language in XML. The main idea of an XML is for you to be able to write your document in a structured form. For example, um, if I have a notepad, this is how traditionally I will store data. SAM 101, 45,000. And since I have this structure, I'll carry over and I'll say, okay, Abby 102, 65,000. But this is not how the data gets stored in the database or in the record structure. So what XML says, XML says, well, instead of you having to do all of this, I want you to be able to uh, structure it. Let's say employees will going to be your main structure in which you're going to have a bunch of employees where each employee will have more one or more employee tags and then you will going to structure each employee such that each employee will then going to be divided into name where you're going to store Sam will you have another element for let's say ID where you're going to store his ID and you're going to have another element for salary where you're going to store his his salary so now your record structure is a little bit more structured than it was before so this is exactly how I will going to store my data this is exactly how I have uh, I will read it back so the whole nine yards you know, so I, I, I can just replicate it again and paste it and create another record for Abby so things are far structured when it comes to XML so Java can actually produce an XML document and could also read an XML document back now in order to read an XML document, you have two separate approaches. One is called DOM, the other one is called SACS. DOM stands for Document Object Model. So Document Object Model always asks you, tell me in this XML document which is the root element. So root element is the element that holds all other elements. In our case that is employees, because that's holding all other elements. And then it starts traversing down from employees to each and every employee so you can actually write a loop and say go through the employee structure over and over again every time you read an employee structure I want you to read the name field 
its data, ID field, its data, salary field, its data. Okay, now if you also have an employee having an attribute, okay, let's say position equals to M for manager, and uh, this position, it, this has another position, let's say salesperson. So you can instruct Java that employee has an attribute called position, I need the value of that. So things can be structured in an XML document very similar to how the data will be stored in a database or the data will be stored in a DDS because if you notice DDS also is a structure, physical files or your databases and also in RPG you can write your own structures. S similarly in C, C++ you can write your own structures. So XML comes very handy because it allows you to transport data in, an, in a structured format and then read it back in a structured format. So that's DOM approach. The other one is called SACS, which is simple API for XML. SACS and DOM, the main difference is SACS is event driven. So in SACS you write three events. Start element, it automatically reads through your document. As soon as it runs into it, any element starting tag, it triggers start element. As soon as it runs into an end element, it will trigger end element. And in between the start and the end, it fires another uh, event called characters, which reads the data within the start and the end. So now, when SAX is going through this, you will say, okay, do not grab the data until and unless you run into a child of employee tag. So it will traverse through the whole document, but will only grab data from children of employee. So SAX and DOM will look at both approaches today as to how they will read the same XML document, but a little bit differently. Okay, so uh, we're not going to be producing this document. So let's go back to Eclipse and let's right click on the project and create a new file. The name of this new file will be students.xml. Now Eclipse allows you uh, to see the node base architecture here. When we are done with our source, we're going to come back here. But let's go back to the source behind the scene. This is where I'm going to produce my XML document. There are a few items that I want to go over before I go into the Java code for reading through this. Do you guys understand the word node? Node. It's the same meaning as we have in JavaFX. An item within is called a node. Node list means list of nodes. Okay. So we need to be able to go through our entire document node list and read through each node and whichever node is of interest to us, we're going to just read that node's data. So we can get elements by name. That means I want to read the element by name, first name. So this is when I will provide Java with the name of the element that I want to read. You can also read an element by ID. If the element has an ID, so you can actually give ID as an element attribute, and you can read an element by an ID. So you can read an element by ID, you can read an element by name, and you also need to provide your element with what will be the root element. So these are some of the concepts that we're going to use over and over again. Okay, also notice, student has a child called first name, correct? Okay. Now, can a student has more than one children called first name? 
In our case, we don't, but can it? Certainly. XML doesn't limit you how you structure your document. But XML just tells you how to traverse through it. So if there are two occurrences of first name inside student, how do you think Java should read it? If there are more than one elements of first name called first name in a student, how do you anticipate Java should read it? Read it as an array. Okay? So that is why whenever Java reads these items, it automatically treats them as an array. But since we only have one occurrence of each one of them, we'll say read only the array index zero. Okay, so that's, how, that's why when we start writing the code, you will notice that, okay, there's only one first name. Why is it reading as an array? Because that's how Java treats it by default. So, now we're going to go back to source, and we're going to start a new class here. We're going to call this one read XML file using DOM with a public static void main. So we'll have our try cache block. So we're going to be creating an object of file type which would allow us to read the XML document. And you've got to keep organizing your imports. Okay, so in order for you to work with DOM, you need to create an object of document builder factory types. It's a factory object. Then you use the factory to create a builder object. So that you can build a document builder. Then you use the document builder to parse the file to XML standards and that's where you will use the document class object. So the document class object on line 16 is the one that is allowing you to traverse through the students.xml file in a DOM approach. So it allows you to parse it in a DOM approach. Now I want to read the root element. So read root element. And this would actually, you know, this would allow us to see that we are able to actually read the document. So I'll say, okay, root element. So I'll go, start with doc. Doc, get me the document element. Document element refers to the root element and get me the name of that root element. This is basically I'm saying doc locate root give me its name. So literally it translates to that. So now based on whatever we have written this far Let's try to run it. And you'll notice they'll say root element class because in our XML document, class is my root element. So you got to make sure your student.xml is not in the source folder, it got to be at the project level. And then it can read it.
Okay, now we are going to start traversing through the list. So we're going to say, okay, read array of student elements. This array is called node list. So we'll actually use node list class to locate from the document elements by tag name. Which element I'm looking for? I'm looking for student. So what it does, it creates an array of the student elements and return it in a node list object called endlist. So I can now write a loop and I could traverse through one student at a time. I can go through one student at a time. Yeah, that's one, one more thing that you have to look at because document class belongs to Swing Package as well as W3C DOM. So you have to make sure that you grab the document class from W3C DOM package and not the Swing Package. If that's the case, get rid of the uh, Swing import and reorganize your imports. Okay, so now we have an array of node list. Now we're going to traverse through this array. So for integer i equals to zero, i should be less than list dot get length i plus plus. So I'm I'm traversing through this whole list using a for loop. Again, this is the same concept we learn in array. You start from zero and you stop one before the length. So we will be running and grabbing one student at a time. So from the node, as we grab one student as, as at a time, each student will then be stored in a node. So from the node list, I'm gonna grab the ith item, whatever is the index, I'm gonna just grab that item, okay? Again, make sure when you're organizing your imports, the node comes from org w3c dom package. So I've grabbed one student. So n node always holds the current student. Now I will going to display the student's, you know, the name of the tag. Print ln node name is n node dot get node name and then I'm gonna put a number here so that you know I'm, I'm reading student 1, student 2, student 3 so whatever it is I plus 1 because I starts from 0 but to the user the 0th element we want to say student 1 so node name student 1 that's what we want to display for the first record that we read okay now I want to read the data of each of the items inside student. How many items are in the student? Three. And I also want to read the attribute ID number. So we're going to now read all of that in an if condition. Why? Because this if condition will going to test for me that only do this if node type matches to be an element node. Okay. So only do this for an element. Don't do it otherwise. So read the data only if it's one of the elements. So if the child is, is a tag, only then display the child. If child is not a tag, if it's a comment or anything else, don't bother reading it. Okay. So now I'm going to grab element So we're going to convert our node into an element so that we can start reading through it. Again, when you're grabbing the element, grab it from org.w3c. So element is basically equal into a tag. So now we are treating it as like a tag. 
student ID number which is coming from an attribute and that's what I called it IDNO that's what I'm gonna read and now I will read each of the children of the node since it's a long syntax I'm going to do the next line so e element dot get elements by tag name I want to read first name remember I told you you can have multiple occurrences of first name that's why Java treats it as an array and I want to read the data in it so that's text content and we'll follow this for the other two elements So now when you run this program, you will see that your program actually reads through the ex entire XML document.